Hi everyone, you're watching The Culture Cave. In this episode, I'm going to start reviewing um, this book, which is Searching for the Dharma. Now, this is from the Lumbini Institute. Um, it's a limited edition, but it's an amazing text. Um, it's very complex. It goes into um, the origin of pilgrimage and what it actually means around the world. Um, so I actually... Um, this, this text caught my eye in Jimbocho, which is um, an enormous book town. It's the biggest book town in the world, actually, based in the metropolis of Tokyo. And uh, I picked this book up um, and I'm finally getting around to reviewing it. So it's uh, the full title is Searching for the Dharma, Finding Salvation, Buddhist Pilgrimage in Time and Space. Um, now, this book actually specifically goes into um, Asian pilgrimage, of course, due to the, the Buddhist references. So it goes into the, the origins of Buddhism and where the human pilgrimage um, started and how it comes into play. Um, on many different levels, actually. Um, so I've made I've made quite a few notes, and I'm going to um, I'm going to go through uh, my review of this, um, probably stage by stage, because it's quite a quite a complex text, and it draws upon other texts um, from the um, the Indian uh, sacred texts and 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 so many more. So we'll take it step by step. Um, but first of all, the, the question, of course, is what does pilgrimage mean and what does it mean to communities around the world? Is there one definition that we can all, as a global community of pilgrims, agree on? Or are there always going to be um, varying definitions of this? And um, the answer to that actually comes down to, to language and, and culture, of course. So um, the book... First of all, it, it bases one of its key definitions on Turner's theory, and um, it's defined as pilgrimage is a place to where one embarks on a journey um, to a centre out there, a centre that is outside of ourselves and our our familiar local community. So it's the idea of, of heading out there, um, which is uh, demarcated by a liminal departure and a return, uh, typically. We'll come on to the exception in just a moment. But the pilgrim leaves his home, typically, in order to undertake a journey in a kind of social liminal state to a sacred place or a centre out there, um, as opposed to one's local community. And um, subsequently, um, new communities can be formed um, elsewhere when one meets other pilgrims, etc. And as a result of the pilgrimage itself, by the pilgrim or the seeker, if people are moving in the same direction to the same place, then new communities uh, can be formed. And um, so it, it can also be a social experience. Um, and once we are personally and internally transformed, um, the pilgrim finally returns to his own social context and community once that goal is obtained. Um, and that's that's basically um, based on Turner's theory for that one. Um, other definitions include um, a pilgrim sits at a point um, on the pilgrimage between a religious residency and an itinerary and an itinerary so it's called a religious residency and um, itineracy uh, without movement there is no pilgrimage so there has to be a journey involved and without leaving somewhere there is no pilgrimage without returning there is no pilgrimage um, the exceptions to this rule are uh, Buddhist monastics themselves because they leave one worldly community to join another one and never to return really because they spend their lifetimes um, on the, the journey of Dharma. So um, monks are therefore engaged on a lifelong pilgrimage. Um, Okay, let's go into the linguistic side um, and the, the different definitions of, of languages around the world. So we'll start with the Chinese expression for becoming um, or being a monastic, which is chu jia in Chinese, chu jia. And it's the idea of having left the household, um, having left the household. And there are various definitions of pilgrimage which all come back to the fundamental principles um, of pilgrimage. There are three fundamental principles. Um, 
The first two are that they are temporal and spatial, which is where the, the title of this book um, comes from, Time and Space. And of course, it has to involve some kind of movement, which we, we know that time and space have to involve movement as well and motion. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the the Western definitions of, of pilgrimage. Um, so the, the correspondent terms for pilgrimage derive from Latin, unsurprisingly. And in Latin, the term for pilgrimage is uh, peregrinus, which means foreigner or stranger so it lends itself to to that meaning also which is which is so interesting isn't it because probably the the first travelers um in the history of mankind would be pilgrims there would be a spiritual element um involved um predominantly i would say and in modern terms we have the french term of course which is Pellerinage and the German Pilger, or for pilgrimage, uh, pil Pilgerfahrt, and that is the idea of also travelling to a foreign land. So there's the idea of the foreign, faraway place. And then in Christian tradition, um, pilgrimages have been practiced since the fourth century, uh, with the exception, of course, of pilgrimages to the Holy Land, which predate predate the fourth century, of course. Um, now, an interesting point in the book um, is the Japanese definition of pilgrimage. There is, um, there is a, a Japanese scholar who made a very specific point um, about Japanese pilgrimage in terms of how they wanted the, the definition of pilgrimage to, to, um, to vary, to differ from all other cultures around the world. Um, so according to Masahiro Anaseki, Anesaki, um, the Japanese pilgrimage is a separate entity and it's, it's listed specifically as poetic, aesthetic and travelling um, of, of the pilgrim is, can even be in some cases a form of revenge uh, which is to be taken uh, of the enemy um, which is probably to emphasise the Japanese warrior spirit and, and that kind of element of the culture, I, I would imagine. Um, but an interesting definition of pilgrimage is when we think about how the rest of the world would probably, and Japanese also, some Japanese would consider it to be a peaceful journey, you know, um, to get closer to the sacred and also presumably um, to, to achieve some kind of peaceful inner transformation of the self um, so that, that was an interesting part so those are the definitions of pilgrimage in the next part we'll go into um, the book a little bit more and and, uh, and what it alludes to after that thank you for watching